the samurai secrets the bushido code and the art of war honor the first word that comes to mind when we think of japanese samurais this is because the legendary warriors of japan are known less for their military performance and more for the entire life philosophy that dictated their actions in battle and in everyday life when they led the country for let's remember the samurais were not only elite warriors but also the de facto rulers of japan for centuries the history of the samurais begins in the 7th century when japan underwent a period of thorough reforms the Taika reforms in 645 aimed to centralize the Japanese state and strengthen the emperor's authority. Inspired by the neighboring China model, these reforms were consolidated in 702 through the Taiho Code, which instituted a recruitment system. One man out of three or four was recruited into what was to be Japan's first state army. However, the project failed due to the development of regional clans, which did not submit to central authority and used their own military force, a group of warriors known as Bushi, the precursors of the samurais, to exercise control in their territory. The origins of the warrior class thus date back to this era, known as the Heian period, 794-1185 when the new social class developed in response to the changing military needs and the respective reforms regarding the state's military and police system. Seven centuries at the helm of Japan. Once established, the warrior class gradually took over power in Japan when the imperial court was too weak to resist them. At the end of the 12th century, the fight between samurai clans reached its climax in the Genpei War between the Terra and Minamoto clans. The latter's victory in 1185 led to the establishment of Japan's first shogunate, the Kamakura shogunate, and the transfer of political power from the old aristocracy to the samurai class. Thus, the foundations were laid for the system that would dominate Japan for almost seven centuries until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. And during the next shogunate, Ashikaga, 1333 to 1573 which includes the so-called period of warring states the samurais gained even more power serving the provincial barons daimyo who no longer respected the shogun's authority and fought each other for territorial control in this era the samurais began to adopt the customs of the aristocracy and gradually a culture of the samurai class emerged in which the warrior aspect only occupied a part Calligraphy, poetry, music, and the tea ceremony made their way. The samurai was no longer just an elite warrior. He was an educated man with artistic concerns and a strong spiritual side. Starting with the 17th century and the Tokugawa era, Japan's last shogunate, a period in which the state is finally centralized, the samurai's military role in society is limited. Warriors now become bureaucrats and administrators, servants of the great shogun, and despite retaining certain rights, such as the right to bear arms, samurais lose their predominantly military function, which they will nevertheless retain until the 19th century. The Samurai in Battle An exemplary warrior, the samurai skillfully wielded several types of weapons, was a perfect horseman, and an expert in martial arts. Thus, he was the perfect warrior, prepared to face any challenge on the battlefield. The katana was both the sword and the symbol of the samurai. A legendary weapon of the samurais, the katana is at least as well known as its bearer, for the relationship between the warrior and the sword occupied a central place in the samurai culture and was so important that it was said that the sword is the warrior's soul, Tokugawa Ayasu. The samurai never parted from his swords, the katana, the curved sword, and wakizashi, the short sword, carrying them not only in battle but also in everyday life, as a symbol of the bearers belonging to this privileged class, his power, and authority. The samurai sword evolved from the tachi, the traditional Japanese curved blade sword. The origins of this curved blade are not known exactly, but one of the most popular theories holds that it was first used by the Emishir people of northeastern Honshu Island and then taken up by the imperial armies in the 8th century. The difference between the tachi and the katana is not, therefore, in shape, but in the way it is used. The name katana first appears in the Kamakura era, 12th to 14th centuries, when a new type of curved blade sword with the edge up is developed, allowing the warrior to draw the sword directly from the scabbard with the edge facing the enemy. Paradoxically, 
Given the entire symbolism of the katana and the importance of the samurai sword relationship, this was not the Japanese warrior's preferred weapon. Initially, in the 9th to 12th centuries, the samurai was a horse-mounted fighter, specialized in using the bow and arrows, yumi. Only in the period of the wars against the Mongols in the 13th century are swords mentioned as the samurai's main weapon, but it will soon be replaced by the spear, yari, and, starting with the 16th century, by firearms introduced into Japan by the Portuguese. A samurai's armor was at least as important as the weapons he used. Because the samurai had to move quickly in battle, whether on horseback or not, his armor had to be as light as possible to offer him flexibility and freedom of movement. Called Yoroi, the samurai's armor was lamellar, made up of hundreds or even thousands of metal or leather plates. Later, after the appearance of firearms, this type of armor had to be modified to protect the warrior against the new weapons. Thus, an armor was developed, made, on the most exposed parts of the body, of large metal plates, similar to European armors. A distinctive element of the samurai's armor was the helmet, called kabuto. Unlike typical Western helmets, the samurai helmet was customized according to the wearer's choices. Therefore, especially in the Momoyama period, 16th century, numerous extravagant helmets, richly decorated, appeared, the most common of which were various types of horns. Bushido, the warrior's way. The samurai was not just a warrior. On the battlefield, but also outside it, a samurai was guided by a certain moral code, which dictated his actions and attitude in life and death. This was Bushido, the way of the warrior. Bushido, the specific code of honor of medieval and modern Japan, was born from the combination of Confucian morality and the military values of Japanese society. Thus, in a society that, in the medieval period, was engulfed by long periods of war, a way was sought to moderate violence, balanced by deeply moral behavior, so that the warrior would not lose his humanity. Seppuku, the samurai maintains his honor even in death. Although the term Bushido dates from the 17th century, when this code of honor is systematized, it is based on moral principles that samurais had followed for centuries. The Bushido Code, borrowing elements from Confucianism, Buddhism, and Shintoism, was based on seven essential virtues, justice, courage, benevolence, respect, honesty, honor, and loyalty. To these were added temperance, frugality, and the serene and honorable attitude in the face of death, which finds its expression in seppuku. According to the Bushido Code, the samurai confronts and accepts death with serenity. For the samurai warrior on the battlefield, fleeing or surrendering were not valid options. Faced with a hopeless situation or the risk of losing his honor, the true samurai had to choose death. And in everyday life, if a samurai violated the principles of the code, he had to end his life, this being the only way he could save his honor. Thus, the practice of ritual suicide known as seppuku or harakiri emerged. The samurai used a dagger or a sword to slit his stomach, after which his second, called kaishikunin in Japanese, completed the act by beheading. Moreover, if a samurai observed that a comrade of his was behaving in a dishonorable manner, he had to kill him and then commit seppuku so that no one would doubt the reason for killing his comrade. With the Meiji Restoration in 1868 and the beginning of Japan's modernization, the samurais completely lost their privileged role in Japanese society. The emperor abolishes the exclusive right of samurais to bear arms and establishes a modern military force on the Western model, leading to the outbreak of several revolts, the most famous being the Satsuma Rebellion in 1877, which inspired the movie The Last Samurai. Eventually, the samurais disappear from Japanese society, which they themselves had built over the centuries, but through the spirit of the old warriors, their influence on Japanese culture and the ethical and moral code that transcended class boundaries will continue to make their mark on the new Japan, which still honors the memory of the old samurais.